Hi, this is Yaffe Lavova, registered dietitian nutritionist with Baby Bloom Nutrition. And I have a special guest star here. So it's be really close. This is Jenny Beaver with the Arizona Breastfeeding Center. Hi. And her little one right here. Hi, Luke, Luke is right here. Hi, Luke. Hi. <laughs> that was adorable. Uh, so today we are talking about establishing the breastfeeding relationship between mother and newborn. And our main point is your body was made for this. Oh, okay, there was a hiccup. We're back. Your body was made for this. Um, that's not to say that it's going to be easygoing at the beginning. A lot of people need help. I know I did, and I did get help from the Arizona Breastfeeding Center. Saved my life. Um, so it can be very difficult, but your body was really made for this, and there are a lot of misconceptions and trouble that goes along with that. So I wanted to cover a few topics. Um, first is the first thing that happens is that your body produces colostrum, which actually starts at the end of pregnancy. Um, actual milk production starts earlier in the pregnancy. Actually, during the first trimester, your body starts producing, um, starts preparing to produce milk. Right, Jenny? Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Sometimes you'll see it at some point in pregnancy. Oh, yeah. yeah. I heard a story about a woman who was pregnant and started leaking, and she yeah. didn't know. Um, yeah, so that can happen. Um, your, your body really is preparing for this from the very beginning. Um, but the first thing that you're going to see is called colostrum, and that is a thick yellow substance. It's, it's much thicker than your milk that's going to come in, which comes in between three and four days, depending on your body, depending on a lot of factors. Uh, but colostrum is really important because it's very low in volume, but it's very high in protein, antibodies, it kickstarts your immune system. There are growth factors. It's very high in vitamin A, which might account for the color, and antimicrobial factors. And so it's really important for your baby in order to help kickstart their, their immune system. And the, the, vol the volume is disconcerting to some women because they think that they're going to get this, this big amount. But the truth is that the size of your newborn stomach at one day is the size of a marble. Uh, by about the third day, it's the size of a ping pong ball. And the tenth day, it's the size of a chicken's egg. But at that point, your milk is likely come in and you're able to produce a volume that's going to satisfy your newborn. So... That's colostrum, and the purpose is very important. Yeah. Um, in fact, some adults are taking supplements of bovine colostrum, which I probably need to look more into. But um, from what I read, the colostrum that's found in cows, it's very different in makeup than the colostrum found in humans. Um, so your milk, as I said, should come in between three and four days. And at that point, you might feel a feeling of fullness. You want to elaborate on sure. the first yeah. milk coming in? Yeah, uh, de sorry. <laughs> depending on <laughs> depending on how the birth was, um, your milk might take longer or shorter. If you've had babies before, usually it comes in quicker. And if you haven't had babies before, it's usually about three days. Um, some moms who've had a C-section, it'll be a little bit later. Um, it doesn't feel like a feeling of fullness for everybody, um, but a lot of the time you'll notice that your baby's swallowing more. Um, you'll notice that their poops start to change from that black tarry stuff into a green color and then into yellow. Um, or you may start to feel a tingling in your breasts, although that doesn't usually happen very often um, with first-time moms for a little bit of time. But, yeah. Nice. Yeah, that's, I got the tingling, but that, I don't remember. That, was, that wasn't for a while. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also um, I read that if you have gestational diabetes, it might take a little bit longer as well because of the effect of insulin and how that affects your milk production. Right. Any kind of diabetes will slow it. Yeah, right, right. Um, but it's still healthy on the fourth day. It's still, it's still normal and expected. Um, so how often does a newborn feed, and how do you know that they've had enough? So newborn feeds 8 to 12 times a day. Eight or more times Eight is actually. Or more. There are some babies who feed more than that, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Pretty much you should think of your chest as your baby's environment, and that's where they expect to be, and that's where they get their food and their comfort from you, and so offering the breast as often as possible will help your milk come in more quickly and for your baby to be more satisfied and happy and their neurological development to be um, the best it can be. Okay. Um, and how do we know that the baby's getting enough? So that's a really good question and probably the one I get asked most. So in those early days, you want to look for not what goes in a baby because unfortunately we don't have ounce marks on our breasts. 
but you want to look at... <laughs> That'd be convenient, right? <laughs> be convenient. Everybody would like that. Um, but you want to look at what comes out. And so the babies will generally poop. And depending on how many poops they have, you can actually have a pretty good idea of how much they're getting. So day one of life, they should get one quarter size poop. Day two of life, there should be two. Day three, three poops. And day four, there should be four or more. And from then on, it sh they should have three or four poops per day. And these are pretty good size poops. It's not skid marks. I like to say that to parents because sometimes they're like, oh, my baby poops 15 times a day. And they're like little skid marks. You're looking for quarter size poops. Um, and that's how you know your baby's getting enough. And they'll keep pooping about three or four times a day or more up until a month old. And in that time, if you ever have a baby that's really trying to nurse a lot and cluster feeding and you're wondering, that's what you're going to look at. You're going to say, well, are they getting enough poops? And if they are, most of the time things are going okay. Good to know. Yeah. So normal weight loss for a baby while in the hospital, um, they can lose up to about 10% of their body weight in the first four days. And there are a lot of factors that, that cause that to be more or less. Um, if you have some complications with your birth and you may need to be pumped full of fluids, that's going to also pump your baby full of fluids. And therefore, the first weight that they take is not going to be 100% accurate. And the result is that your baby loses more weight than they should, when really they didn't have uh, that much weight to begin with. So it's not an accurate reflection of how much weight they're losing. Um, and a lot of times this is when the doctor will come and say, we may need to default to formula. And I'm, I'm glad that formula exists. I believe that it's, it's important that it's out there and it's a resource for those who need it. But a lot of times we default to using formula because of this weight loss issue, which may be, we may be dealing with inflated numbers and they're not really accurate. Hey, hi Luke. Can you say hi? <laughs> <laughs> so another big issue that we come up on a, a lot is suspected low milk supply. And this is different than actual low milk supply, which could be caused by poor latch or nipple pain, uh, a lack of glandular tissue, illness, hormone imbalance, and all of those issues are, are significant issues that should be dealt with with the appropriate healthcare professional, whether it be your local lactation consultant or your doctor. Uh, but suspected low milk supply is a huge issue in our society. We, for some reason, get the message that our bodies weren't meant to do this, and everything is a sign that your baby's not getting enough, and everything is a sign that you're not producing enough, and it's really not true in most cases. Uh, the baby might be cu cluster feeding, which is totally normal, and it's a way for the baby to establish demand, which then increases supply. You remember your high school economics class. Well, it kind of applies here, too. Uh, the loss of the full feeling. When you first start breastfeeding, you might have a feeling of fullness in your breasts, which might go away, and you may have less leakage as well. But those are just signs that your body is acclimating to breastfeeding and doesn't necessarily mean that you have a low supply. Do you want to elaborate? Sure. Um, yeah, so I would say that, that we commonly see babies come in our office that, um, that are gaining they're well, they're and, and that... That is a good sign that you have um, enough milk. So that's that's the first sign. If your baby is gaining well and going to the doctor's appointments, and even if they're on a low growth curve, they're following that growth curve. <laughs> this one is really wanting her to come. I'm helping. <laughs> no advertisements for Dory. Um, following that growth curve. Um, so following a growth curve is really important, no matter what that curve is. And then um, also making sure that that they're getting those poopies every day. If, if you have a baby that's really a really fussy and frustrated all the time and um, and you're wondering if you have enough milk, a really good thing to do is, is to go in and get them weight checked and make sure that they're going on their curve because there are a lot of things that can cause fuzziness, fussiness. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <We're back. laughs> cause babies to act that way and it's not always milk supply, although I feel like in our culture, for whatever reason, that's the first thing. So people always will blame breastfeeding first. Right. So making sure your baby's growing well if you have those concerns is really important. Um, and that's a really important thing to note overall throughout early childhood is that if they have established an, a growth curve and they follow that growth curve, likely they're getting the right nutrition, whether they're an infant, whether they're a baby, or whether they're a toddler. If they started at the 20, 20th percentile and they haven't differed by 20 standard deviations, or two, <laughs> two standard deviations from that line, two. yeah, two, <laughs> um, then, then they are likely getting the proper nutrition, and that's, that's just true across the board. 
some other issues that you may be dealing with if you have a very fussy baby is um, you might want to try baby wearing. I highly suggest tandemtrouble.com for a lot of tutorials on baby wearing safely. Um, also, infant massage. I know there, out here there's East Valley Infant Massage. They give classes on, um, on massaging babies, and that can help with some of that, that stomach upset. And if none of that works and you're finding things like mucusy poops or, or blood in the poop, you could be dealing with a, um, a food intolerance, at which point the mother does need to see a professional in order to have help with dealing with that. Um, and that's something that I do as well. We have a question. Why are you sideways? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how funny. No, we're not. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. <laughs> um, I didn't realize that was going to come across as sideways. <laughs> wow, that's embarrassing. Um, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Any other questions, comments, issues? Okay, well, this is going to be on um, on Baby Bloom Nutrition, available for, um, <laughs> thanks, <laughs> thumbs up, um, available for future viewing, and if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to comment in the comment section below. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Daffy. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. <laughs>